Welcome to the Legion of Lords. You are now one of the loyal subjects. What's up guys, it's Lord here. This is going to be episode number two of our Minecraft Let's Play series on vanilla. And I've done a bit of work off camera. And by a bit, I mean quite a bit. And as you can see, I redid the house a little bit, got our own storage extended, got our furnaces inside the house now so we can actually access them from inside the house. And this doorway, this doorway is going to be leading out to the platform. I figured we would start it from here this episode and actually begin planning it out a little bit. Not really sure exactly how we're going to do that, but we're going to get to that eventually. And as you can see, like I said, the house got a little bit bigger and I did a lot of terraforming. If you remember, this thing had some little hills and stuff and everything and I took those out. I spent some time and planted sugarcane all the way around, put some sh uh, sand on the outside, make the sugarcane around it, extended the farm a little bit. Um, I put these oak planks in to take us to our stone mine, which I started over here, as you can see. So this is our cobblestone mine, and if anything else comes up, we'll mine it too. Uh, I also made the bridge here going to the mine and some stairs to make it a little bit more accessible. So now our mine is within reach for sure. So here's the mine guys. But like I said, I did a lot of resource gathering. I did a lot of terraforming just to kind of speed up the process a little bit. It's definitely not the best, but it'll work. It'll work for now. So like I said, on this episode, I really want to focus on kind of starting out our platform. I did start out uh, smelting down some stone, which I think I put back in the chest somewhere. In one of the chests. There's a couple chests outside, too. Uh, yep. See, as we can see, I have a lot of smooth stone ready to go. Uh, that's pretty much from all the terraforming that I did. And I cut some birch trees down and used all that wood to make it down into stone. So let me just grab a bunch of it. Also, as you can see, we got the rest of the stuff. We got some diorite, some granite, some andesite, sand, and dirt. And our crops are coming along. So now we're actually able to have a little bit of food with us. Um, eventually, we will move the crops except for the sugar cane i think the sugar cane will stay here uh we'll move the crops to the platform once we have a big enough area and we can kind of map out how we want it to go what i'm thinking so far is from here we're going to build a platform straight out maybe do some kind of fancy archway eventually maybe with some diorite or andesite or granite something like that uh it'll lead into our farms which i'm planning on kind of making planner boxes like giant planner boxes where um mainly right now it's going to be wheat until we can find some potatoes some carrots some i don't even know what else at this point um watermelons uh pumpkins whatever we can find basically that's the plan is we're gonna extend it out have a little archway system going on and then build it out farms and then that'll lead into eventually some sort of structure for a house. Uh, that way we can just come through here and it's a straight shot. We don't have to do any turning. And um, yeah, that's the plan for right now. It may change in the future. I don't know for sure. But it's getting nighttime. So I'm going to sleep and I will see you guys in the morning. All right. Good morning, guys. So like I said, we are going to be building platforms. So I'm going to use stone slab, mostly because I think stone slabs are the most clean cut of the slabs. And I think it looks really nice when you put them all together, personally. So we have made a crap ton of slabs. We're going to make sure we hold down the shift button. And I want this to be a four. I think a four wide would be nice. Uh... Mostly because the archways and stuff. I was actually thinking also, if we use a different material, which I'm hoping we will for the archways, we can build them coming out of the water as well. 
uh, kind of coming out of the water, extending on the sides, and then, you know, coming together. That's the plan that I have. That's the vision that I have right now. Like I said, these things are always subject to change. Um, but, like I said, let's make the, the bridge walkway, if you will. Uh, haven't decided if I'm going to make it like a multiple layer type of thing. Uh, if it's going to be above the water. I've never tried anything like you know, going below the water. I mean, I think that'd be kind of ridiculous at this point. But it all depends on what you guys want to see. Um, for now, I'm just going to kind of keep it water level, maybe have things one or two blocks above water level. I mean, like the, the farms and stuff. I mean, obviously those things are going to have to be built one up from from this level here. And that's that's really what I'm thinking right now. Uh, we have a decent amount of water to work with. I'm not sure how far out it extends. Hopefully it extends for quite a while, so we don't have to worry about that. But we can always adapt to that later on. So I'm thinking for now, let's use up the rest of this stack if we can. That way it'll be two stacks um, as far as the, the walkway goes. I don't want it to be like ridiculously long, but I want it to be... You know, long enough that we have a nice little archway thing that we can decorate, and it doesn't look too crappy. I mean, when you want, when you have a YouTube world, you want it to stand out at least a little bit, right? So that's what I'm thinking so far. Uh, but while I was playing this offline, off cam, uh, I realized that I'm actually kind of starting to like those andesite, diorite, and uh, granite blocks more than I thought I did. If you remember in the first episode, I said I didn't really, really didn't like it that much, and I think I'm going to slowly start changing my mind about that because there's not really any other blocks like it out there, so might as well use it. And right, I think I see some land over there, but hopefully, I don't think we'll get that far. That's a pretty, pretty good ways away. All right, so now we want to extend outward. All right, I need to decide how many blocks we want to do this. Uh, I think we should use 32. Use half a stack going this way. If possible. That way we know exactly how much room we have to use. Alright, so we should be able to make it. I mean, there's only 12 more before we get to half a stack. But yeah, guys, as far as this world goes, this is going to be the main project. I do possibly want to do other projects eventually. I um, haven't really decided what those are going to be yet. Uh, I know I want to do some type of, like I said in the first episode, maybe some type of automated farms, whether that will be on the platform or not. Uh, that's yet to be decided. Um, obviously, maybe do something like a fishing pier or an animal shelter of some kind you know where we keep all the livestock once we find them um like i said it really depends on what you guys want to see and i'll re be recording these episodes uh in real time as far as releasing them and then waiting for you guys to tell me what you want to see all right so let me take a look at this this should be a gigantic platform Alright, so in order to make it square, we have 34 and 34 that way. So we need a stack and four to go that way. So we need a whole stack and four. So that's 68, right? So we're going to just kind of fill it in here. And it's going to stay square for now. Eventually we might, you know, put some rounded out edges or, <coughs> like I said, some archways, things like that. All right, guys, so I got the basic foundation laid out here. It's going to take a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stone slab to fill this in. But once we're actually done with it, then <coughs> we're going to have a really stable and gigantic platform to work out of. So... I doubt we're going to get it done today, but 
that's the plan guys that's what i'm planning on doing and hopefully you guys agree with this um but anyway as i was saying before um i'm really excited to see how this world is going to turn out guys i mean it's always um something exciting when you have a blank canvas and you kind of just let your imagination run wild and with you guys helping me out i have no doubt that there's going to be some pretty epic things that are going to be built on this place um eventually i would like to show you guys the uh, legion of lords uh vanilla realm server as well uh eventually i will do a quick uh tour of that world now that the sports complex mega build is kind of sort of complete uh, the only thing we have left to do on that world is the actual biggest build which is going to be the football arena but we got everything else done within the castle walls within the arena walls if you will um, so I'd be I'm really excited to actually get that video recorded and, and out there for you guys um, spent a lot of time on that server and it's it's just been a pleasure to, wor to work with you guys on that um and and you know this being like a single player server it's it's a lot more challenging because i i can't be like okay we need to gather this resource and i have you know four or five people helping me gather a resource it it just takes a lot longer to do anything in a single player world um but i mean that's the challenge of it and that's that's really what i get out of it as well and I haven't played a single player Minecraft world in a long time. So, I mean, this is where I learned how to play, was on single player Minecraft. So, to come back to it is, uh, it, it has a weird feeling, but I mean, it's, it's a good feeling all the same. It's just a different experience, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for this world. I'm really excited about how it's going to turn out, and... Um, Hopefully you guys enjoy the experience with me and stay patient with me because, like I said, it is going to take me a little bit more time to release the content because I'm doing it all myself. Um, but, like I said, that's the challenge of it and that's the reward of it at the end of it all. So, um, I'm going to keep working on the platform, guys. Hopefully I can get some more of it filled in before the episode ends, but if not, then... I think you can understand why. I mean, this is a gigantic area for us to fill in. And it's going to take a lot of time. So, hopefully I'll see you guys in just a little bit and it will be completed. 20 minutes later. Alright guys, so I realized very shortly into building this thing that it is going to take me a god ton of time to mine all the stone. And then I'm going to need fuel to burn all that stone to make the stone you know smooth stone so that i can make stone slabs so i guess i might as well give you guys some commentary while i'm mining away um think of a topic for you guys um i guess for those of you that don't really know me all too well um i am a 24 year old juvenile supervision officer which means that i work in juvie with the county that I live in and I get the privilege of dealing with the worst kids in the county as far as behavior goes um, it has its good days it has its bad days for sure um, but I mean I, I enjoy my job overall some days I really don't want to go as I'm sure you guys can probably understand um, I mean, you, I mean, if you're around that age, you go to school with those people and you know how bad they can be. But most of the time, the kids are pretty good. Um, every now and then, they want to get riled up. They want to you know, do whatever they're going to do, and nobody's going to tell them any different. But that's when I step in and have to do my job. Um, I've only had to physically put my hands on a couple of kids and restrain them and, you know all that kind of stuff um but when it comes to me i'm pretty laid back kind of guy i mean that's just how i work and the kids know that and they know that i'm probably one of the easiest people to get along with as far as the staff goes i mean 
we're we're supposed to be tough on them, but at the same time, they, a lot of the time, these kids don't really know any better, and they've never been told no, or you know, nobody's ever told them no. They just whine and they get what they want. So when somebody like me comes along and actually does tell them no, then it's like a revelation. It's a shocker. And um, but like I said, I, I'm very easy to get along with, even at work. Like I'm pretty laid back, and I can be really stern with the kids at times. And other times, I really should be a lot more stern than I am. But um, like I said, I enjoy my job. I mean. Uh, Sometimes, like I said, it gets really hectic, but other times, I mean, the kids, they know their problems really aren't with the staff. And when it gets to that point, then, yeah, then we got a problem. But most of the time, the kids, they they know better than to try and test the staff. I mean, we've been around the block. We know what their games are. They're not... They're not coming up with some new type of idea to try and trick the staff into doing what they want. I mean, it's it's all the same thing every time, you know. And, it, and unfortunately, it's a lot of the same kids every time too. I mean, it's repeat offenders. And by the time they get into the system, we know who they are. They know what to do, what they can't do, and I mean, they know what they can get away with, and they know who they can get away with, with what. Um, it's definitely not a job for everybody though. I mean, uh, I wouldn't even say that I'm particularly good at my job, but I still earn the respect of the kids and, and it, it's like I tell them and I've told plenty of kids this and some kids don't like me at all. Some kids really want me to be in charge of them for the day and, it's all about how you talk to them and it's about how you treat them and a lot of the time they just really want to be heard a lot and that's another thing too i mean it's not only that they've never been told no but it's just that nobody ever really took the time to to listen to them and i i really try and do that i think that for me it's like if i'm going to talk to somebody they should give me the respect of listening to me especially if it's something that i really want to talk to them about and even if it's nothing at all, I mean, you should still give people the same respect of um, and treatment that you want to receive. And anyway, like I was saying, I tell the kids this, and and it really kind of surprises most of them, honestly. And I remember I told this to one kid who really hated me, and he hated me the first day that he met me. And I never said a word to the kid until I told him this. And it, after I told him this, it was like he was a completely different person towards me. I told him, I was like, look, dude, I haven't said a word to you all day. So what's your deal? I said, look, dude, like you may not like me and that's fine, but I'm going to respect you 24 seven, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, I'm going to respect you. And when you're not respecting me, I don't care what you're doing or saying or thinking about me. I'm still going to respect you the same way. So how you act towards me doesn't matter. I'm just needing to do my job, man. And after that, he apologized and he was cool with me. I mean, I never had a problem with him again. And it's really, like I said, it's a matter of respect between these kids. And unfortunately, they think that respect is, is earned in the wrong ways. You know, whether it's doing illegal things or being in a gang or, you know, doing drugs or... Whatever the case may be, I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, they're in juvenile for a reason, but, you know, I mean, it just, it's, it's unfortunate and it's sad. And sometimes you just don't know what to say to these kids, but, you know, I mean, you try and do the best you can with what, with what you're given. And sometimes it's just never enough, you know, um, it's it's a product of the environment and unfortunately like i said it's the same kids every time and you just don't know what to say after a while i mean they say that they're gonna behave when they get out and they're gonna do this and they're gonna do that but very rarely does that ever happen
And it, like I said, it's really unfortunate because a lot of the time these kids really aren't that bad. They just make really bad decisions. It's very few and far between that actually deserve to be in juvenile or to be incarcerated. And I, I don't know. It, it's a really hard decision to make coming from my perspective, at least, you know, how do you separate the good kids from the bad or the bad from the worst and the worst from the worst? I mean, it, it all comes down to, to your own perspective about it. And in the end, we're really just trying to look out for these kids. And it comes to a point where you're like, who am I to say what's best for them? But at the same time, they obviously can't decide for themselves what's best, or at least what's legally right. So it's a tough position for us, for sure. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I work in juvie. It's a place you never want to go. It's a place you never want to stay. I tell the kids all the time, I look, I'm like, dude, I, I'm ready to leave after my eight-hour shift. I don't know how you guys can stay here for weeks or even months at a time and keep coming back i mean it's like dude it's your fifth time here like don't you think you need to do something else and you know stop doing whatever it is that you're doing to get in trouble i mean we've had kids in there since like the age of i don't even know how how young there was one kid that looked like he was like seven i mean i'm like dude what did you have to do to get in here but it's it's not a good place guys if if you've if you've ever been then you probably know what i'm talking about and if it was a more pleasant experience for you then good on you but i would have hated to be in juvie as a kid man it, it, that it just sounds like the worst possible place to be i mean you have no pretty much no say in what you do when you do it or how you do it and a lot of the time it really just depends on your behaviors too if you're already messing up then you're going to have a really hard time. And if you don't like being told what to do, then you're going to have an even harder time. Um, yeah, guys. And before I, I worked for the juvenile, I worked out of a boot camp for the, for the county, the same, the same, uh, the same thing. But I worked as a transporter. I took kids to the doctor. I took them to placements. I took them, you know, wherever, but I got my training out of the boot camp so that if, uh, they needed me, I could work as a drill instructor, which I did from time to time. So, and I mean, that was fun. That was fun for sure. Uh, it wasn't really my thing to yell at the kids, but if they pissed me off enough, it was on. And it, it's a it's a whole different game, you know. It, it was a job, and I learned a lot about it. I learned a lot about myself, too, and uh, I mean, that's, that's really the main thing when you, when you start getting a job in the career field that you want, you know, you want to get as many experiences as possible because you never know what you're going to like or what you don't like. Like when I got transferred over to be a supervision officer at juvie, I thought I was going to absolutely hate it. And some days I do, some days I don't. Um, but you have to take everything with, you know, with a learning experience in it. You can't just chop it up to, well, this is going to suck, so I might as well, I know I'm not going to enjoy it, so why even try, or why not give it a chance, and I mean, that's that's really the attitude that I had to go into it with. Once I finally kind of got over the shock of, okay, you're being transferred to do something that you think that you're going to hate, but, you know, you got to give everything a fair chance in life. You can't be prejudgmental about everything, and sometimes it's the things that you hate to do the most that give you the hardest lessons and most important lessons. Um, you know, whether it be through your career, through school, through life, through whatever, um, you have to take everything as it comes and you can't really be afraid to branch out and do something new. I mean, even for me, streaming and recording was something that I thought that I would be, you know, shitting my pants over basically um and at first i i really was i was absolutely terrified and scared to to stream and put myself out there on the internet with all these strangers that don't know me and are gonna judge me and 
you know, at the end of the day, I just kind of was like, you know what? If I don't try, then I'm never going to know. And I might as well try. And sure enough, um, not too long into it, I really started enjoying it. And uh, it's been a great experience. And I've been streaming for a little over a year now on Twitch and doing YouTube for mm, maybe eight, nine months now off and on uh, so it's it's been it's been a lot of fun and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon uh, we're almost at 500 followers for the Twitch channel which is amazing I never thought I was going to get that far I figured I would have quit by quit by now honestly um, but yeah it's been all it's been a lot of it is is you guys too I mean the viewers um I've had my fair share of trolls. I've had my fair share of um, relationships going south as far as Twitch goes. But, you know, the majority of people have been absolutely terrific. And I've made a lot of good friends and memories that I'm never going to forget. And, you know, I mean, you just, you really got to, you really got to put yourself out there and try something new. I mean, what, what do you got to lose if, you know, n nothing but time? You got, you got to find that one thing that really makes you happy and and stick with it and the only time that you ever stop is when it stops becoming fun and when it becomes more than just having fun when you start taking things too seriously then that's when that's when things start to go downhill and it's that way with a lot of things um you know, I mean, and it's like I tell the kids, too. I mean, when it comes to things like friends and money and, you know, popularity and, you know, all the material things, all, all these things are temporary. They have little to no importance on what actually matters. And I hear these kids talking, too, about uh, I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that and I'm going to... I'm going to sell this to get to get money and, you know, whatever, whatever they say. Right. And it's just kind of like, why are you trying to please your desire for money so much? Or why are you trying to please your so-called homeboys that don't really give a damn about you to begin with? Where are they at now? They're not here. They're not with you. They may have, they might have been with you when you did whatever you did to come into juvie, but they didn't confess. They didn't take the fall with you. You're taking the fall for them. And just because you don't want to rat them out, you're going to have to pay the consequence fully. So it's kind of like, why even bother? You know, that is, is it really all that important? And I tell the kids too, I, I go, look. The friends that you have in high school, the everything that basically happens in high school as well, once you graduate, it's really not going to matter. You know, the, all your closest friends, unfortunately, for the most part, and I'm sure most people will, will agree, you go your own separate ways. You do your own things, and that's basically life. All right, guys, so I think... This is probably going to actually be doing it for this episode. I got several stacks of stone. Uh, next episode, I will probably be mainly focusing on cutting down trees to get some fuel for these furnaces so that we can smelt it down. It's going to be several episodes now that I look at everything uh, to fill in this area. I mean, it's it's a ridiculously large area now, now that I look at it. Um... I mean, damn, that's it's going to take a while, guys. So I think what I'm planning on doing for this series for now, until we can get everything planned out, each episode will focus on resource gathering and we'll make each episode a new topic, a discussion. Um, that way I'm not wasting time off camera. I will resource gather and I'll talk to you guys about whatever it is that you want me to talk about. So in the comments below, please ask me some questions or shoot out some topics that you guys want to hear. Uh, it'd be much appreciated. Um, but like I said, guys, this is going to be a pretty lengthy project. And it's going to take quite some time to finish. And then we can actually start 
building up our base. Um, but in the meantime, we have this cozy little shack, our sugarcane wall, lots of squid apparently, lots and lots of squid. Um, but yeah, we're going to have our cozy little shack. Got a nice little farm system going, which I'll need to harvest pretty soon. Uh, but like I said, next episode we will be chopping down trees, getting some fuel, uh, maybe mining some stone, depending. And yeah, so I know it's been a little bit of an uneventful stream, and see, I'm already running low on on fuel. Um, so yeah, guys, the next stream, the next stream, the next video, rather, will be chopping down trees and we'll be talking about a different topic so thanks guys thank you so much for watching i really appreciate you being patient with me on this series it's taken me a little bit longer than i anticipated on releasing uh video number two and i really hope you guys have been enjoying it so far and it, it's been a new experience for me and like i said hopefully i'll see you guys in the next episode thank you so much guys catch you later